For the ACR7000 servo, you'll select the motor. This will be printed on the side of the motor. I have a P-series motor, so I'm going to select a PM FBL 04 AM, and then with or without the battery. If I have a brake, I can click the checkbox. By default, the direction of the motor is clockwise when I'm looking at the motor shaft. If I want the counterclockwise to be positive, I'll select this checkbox. We also have the BE and the SM series servo motors, and we also have the MSR and the MX80 um, series linear servo motors. So here we would select the size of the motor and then the winding and the feedback. If you have a custom linear servo motor stage such as an 802 or an 804 part number, you'll need to contact your local distributor in terms of what it actually is if it's a, a custom version of a standard motor, what that standard motor part number will be. So I have a P-series motor. I'm just going to go back to that very quickly. Thanks for your patience. As standard, we presume that the servo motor is going to be mounted to something metal on the machine. This will act as a heat sink. If I am trying to run a servo motor at full power while it's not connected to anything metal, it's just sitting on a wooden work test bench, then there's going to be no heat sink and I'll need to decrease the continuous current um, and I'll show you how to do that here in a second. If I change any of these pull down menus, if I change this to a BE motor, it's going to reset all the settings on the advanced motor parameters screen on the next screen back to the default values. And note two, if the servo motor is an incremental encoder on axis zero, axis one will also need to be an incremental encoder servo motor. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's linear or rotary, so you could have a linear motor on axis zero, you could have a rotary motor with an incremental encoder on axis one. Um, this is because the amplifier board only supports the same feedback on the motors. Now, I have a P-series servo motor which has a BIS C absolute encoder built into it on axis 0. So axis 1 would also need to be a uh, BIS C based servo motor um, as well. And the system will warn you in the configuration wizard uh, when you get to the um, finished screen there will be an error if those don't match. And if I click the show advanced motor parameters, this shows all the ratings for the servo motor, the feedback resolution, the continuous current, the peak current, the number of poles, uh, the pitch count if it's a linear servo motor, the voltage constant for the servo motor, the BIS C if it happens to be a, a BIS C feedback, what uh, what the resolution is on that. And then if I selected a um, brake motor, it'll add a 50 millisecond delay on that um, when we enable and disable. And then if I want to edit any of these, click the checkbox. On the screen, really, um, the continuous current, if you needed to uh, run the motor with no heat sink, if uh, you were trying to run it at full current, I would decrease the continuous current rating by 20%. That should be good. And then um, if the only other item would be the uh, motor ambient temperature. If you have a servo motor installed in a higher ambient temperature, we need to change this uh, in Celsius so no, we know what the starting temperature of the servo motor is so we don't uh, overcurrent the motor. Okay. Thanks.